This is Durumi IDP camp, Abuja. Women, children, dominates this camp, all seeking for one thing, a day's meal. Moving around the camp, every facility here has been provided by private sector or religious bodies. The women, children, unseen visitors are filled with joy, yet confusion on where the next meal will come from. Solidarize to show solidarity with our people, the less fortunate, who have become victims of a depraved society, victims of Syria government malfeasance, misrule, misgovernance, that they have found themselves in this pitiable condition not out of their own making but because they are the forgotten despised and denied members of the society what do they want you can see them timid children little children innocent children 
that do, do not appear to have a future because of successive government pillages. All they are looking for now is just how to eat, not even how to school, not how to buy cars, not how to, to, to live, in, just how to feed. And uh, my heart rends, my heart bleeds, seeing the multitude of innocent children suffering like this. When the children of this super rich captors of the society, captors of the state, uh, luxuriating away abroad in IV tours, the best schools, best houses. That was not God's plan for mankind. God planned equality for mankind. But here we are having a society where there are some super rich and some super poor. So that is why we are here to be able to plant a smile on their faces by bringing them food stuff, cooked food, money, so which can keep them at least for some time. We can, no one can do it alone. We can't even leave them to the government because governments are uncaring, they don't care. But I call on the private sector, private individuals, those whose bread have been buttered for them by Almighty God. To remember these less fortunate members of the society, this hoi polloi, this from Fanon's wretched of the earth, they need to live. They need to, not just to exist but to live, and to live to live a good life. God bless Nigeria. Amen. Yes, thank you. Finally, why do you decide to do this? Yeah, because the situation here is so critical. There are many IDPs, but I decided to choose here after sending. Uh, some of my aides here to go and look at the conditions of the IDPs and I discovered that this one was a very sorry one. Um, I, I will be going around them gradually one by one but we have started with this one today by the grace of God. Um, so do you have any message for the government in line with the situation of this people? My message to the government is to know that a government exists. It's even there in section 14 of the constitution for the welfare and security of the citizens right now we are having neither security nor welfare a government that cannot provide for the people it's not a government it's not a legitimate government it may be a government de facto but it's not a government de jure so my advice to the government is to take care to reach out to these most vulnerable members of the society and put them in their budgets special budget for IDPs and the, the deprived of the society. Uh, without that, we will continue to incubate a dangerous segment of the society. Because when they grow up to discover that the society denied them everything, they usually take up arms against the society. So when you hear of Boko Haram and bandits, no one who is getting fully employed or in a good position we go and begin to carry guns in the forest with lame people. Some of them are doing it as a way of payback to an unaccommodating and unkind society. Yeah, they, it's a payback time. That's the way some of them say it when you, when you talk to them. So in order for us to build a just, egalitarian, equitable and fair society, they must, the government must come to the aid of this uh, deprived people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
We are in Durumi IDP camp, Abuja. Here, Professor Michael Zekome is celebrating his seventh birthday and decided to come and celebrate it with the Italian displaced persons in Nigeria. The scene here is pathetic. It is a scene that shows that there is an attention that is being yearned for. The people here are truly hungry. They are truly in need. You can see how they scrabble for a piece of idomi and a pack of food. Professor Michael Zekome moved with emotions, doing what, he's, what he knows how to do best, caring for the pri less privileged and attending to their needs. Professor Michael Zekome is here to, to, to celebrate with them and show them love. He calls on the government to do the same thing, to provide for them and settle them permanently. Uh, my name is Marcelina Zekome. How do you feel about this scenario playing out here today? Uh, I feel so amazed. Um, I'm grateful to God for making this day a possible one. As you can see, we are here to reach out to the less privileged in our society. And uh, I'm so amazed to see that a number of children are so much in need. These are displaced children. They are here not out of their intention. They are here not out of their willingness. They are here because of the circumstances they find themselves. And it is so heartbreaking to see that uh, children are fighting, crying, yearning, just dragging just to have a piece or a plate of food. That is how bad the situation is. And I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm not really happy. Though I'm happy to be here, to be part of this uh, occasion, to be part of this event, but I'm not happy to see that there are children who cannot boast of one square meal a day. But what Professor Michael Zekome have done? What is your message to the government? Well, Professor Michael Zekome is a philanthropist. He is someone who prefers to see others eat while he remains hungry. Everyone around him knows that fact. Today, I use him as an example to reach out to those who are there. There are many of us who have enough, so much to eat, so much more that our room cannot contain. There are so many of us that waste food on a daily basis. There are so many of us that have clothes that we have not worn for the last, for the past two years. I just want to tell the society, for as many that can see this, this event, that can come across this video today, to please try as little as you can to reach out to the society. Professor Michael Zerome doesn't have it all. He does not even, he's not even as rich as many billionaires in this country. But out of the little he has, he chose this place to reach out to the less privileged. I urge every Nigerian, home and abroad, to see this as a medium to reach out. This is era one IDP camp, Durumi. We, want, we beg you, I personally beg you, that wherever you are watching this video from, from these children, these women, these a man here they need our help not only for food for school many of them are not even in school they need light there's no light in this place the the living standard here is very poor and very low to be honest i wish all nigeria should key into this humanitarian service to reach out to the less privileged in our society and i want to wish professor michael zekome a very happy birthday and a and many more years in good health and in prosperity. Happy birthday, sir. Hello, I'm Dr. S. Zazel Zekome, Mike. Okay, so what do you feel about today's visit of Professor Michael Zekome to the IDP camp? Um, so it's just such a refreshing one. It's good for us to always give back to the people. And it's sad to see a lot of suffering around us. So whenever you can, please just try and give out to anyone and everyone, please. Being a medical doctor, I know you know what is empathy. How does this stimulate your emotions it makes me really sad like i said because it's just so much suffering around us and no matter how much you do it's just always going to be there and i hope the government can do better really because there's so much going on and there's so much that can be done for these people right, thank you very much thank you how do you feel today 
for uh, Professor Michael Zuckerman to come to this camp. I'm thanking these people. Yes, Ubangijin Allah ya dauka kashi ya bashi abin da yana nema. Yes, God will be, Almighty God will give him what he's looking for. Na gode sosai gaskiya zaman mu anan wannan muna cikin damuwa mun dare ba wanda ya kama na kaya anan wannan. We that are here we are suffering but we are happy the way this Christ has come to our world. Gaskiya ina farin ciki sosai ina gode mishi wancan mutum kai daga shi har family shi har iyayen shi dukkan ubangiji Allah ya kara musu nisan kwana ya sa musu albarka sosai. Mun gode. Amo, may I give you a show my Michael Zephyr, barista, a show my Michael Zephyr, man. Well, uh, um, I'm very, very pleased and happy and very, very, very joyous to have my whole family around with me to celebrate the birthday of Professor Chief, Professor Royal High Chief Mike Ozeko, man. Um, S.A.N. a.k.a. Akwakwa Vigi Vigi of um, Edo Kingdom. Um, it's very, 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 very nice to see um, us right here um, doing this charitable event and donating for the less privileged. Yeah, it's so, so sad to see how people live in this country. This our country, Nigeria, where it's so, 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 so stressful to even be a human being in this country. Just to be a human being, no? to even breathe hair self is very, very stuffy. So that one self is something to even thank God for. So. Hi guys, my name is Oshose Michael Zekome. I'm the first girl and today is my dad's birthday. I just want to wish him a happy birthday. I'm wishing him long life and prosperity. He's the best dad in the whole world. He has done so much for us. He taught us how to love, how to be kind, how to be generous. I'm so grateful that he's clocking 67 today. And I pray that today marks a remarkable day in his life. And more blessings continue to follow him in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this, this he has done, his visit to this camp. Well, funny enough, I have my own NGO, Shozilo's Initiative, and courtesy of my dad, he inspired us while growing up that giving is happiness. A rich person does not give, but a generous person. So no matter how little my dad has, he would always be. So today, being the 15th of October 2024, today is his birthday, and he clocks 67, and he decided that he's going to come to the IDP camp to share food, drinks. That's a man of the people, a man who has a large heart, a man who cares for people. He inspires not just me, but a lot of people out there. I love you, Dad. My name is Portia Ozekome Austin, and I'm one of the daughters of Chief Mike Ozekome, the celebrant, our daddy. So we are here to celebrate with him, to share the happiness with the less privileged and everyone. This action of today, how does that inspire you? Wow, it really inspires me a lot. Charity um, giving is one of the best things you can give to the society, helping the people who are not buoyant enough to help themselves, to share what you have with them. It gives you happiness with him. Very few are choosing that you are mandated by God, you have hearkened to the call of the Lord, who will ask on one day, when I was in prison, did you visit? When I was sick, did you visit? When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? You have hearkened to the call, you have visited him in his dungeon, you have visited him on his sick bed, you have fed his hunger, you have clothed his nakedness. Whoever is part of you here is blessed. Not everybody cares to reach out to somebody he doesn't know. Somebody is not related to. That's why I said to you, congratulations. You understand what I mean? No weapon fortune against you or against whoever stood by you or stand by you shall prosper. Your father's prayer, your mother's prayer will always abound and abide in you and you'll abound and abide in it forever, back or never. Amen. Continue to be the ambassador of the Lord who created you who so bless you and you continue to bless you forever. Amen. Continue to be beyond Abuja IDPs, beyond Nigeria, Amen. beyond Africa, you will be felt at the global level. Amen. 
And after you are gone, all of you, your children will inherit this virtue of caring for the needs in society. I am Idris Ibrahim Alilu. I'm the coordinator and spokesman of the 18 camps in six area councils of Abuja. He knows me very well. They are our part. They adopted us at Children National Hospital. So I'm excited to see you, and I appreciate he will give me your name and your contact because you are one of our ambassadors. Bolognians are there. Trillionaires are there. They then spare a thought. But you, you didn't send the food. You came by yourself. Congratulations. You came by yourself. You understand what I mean? Bear in mind that eh, we shall make eternity. Money is good, but beyond money, your spirits, they learn from their young ones. I, I came here when I was 62, no, uh, uh, around 62. They took me to the Google at the age of 62. I turned 17 on May 25th. Understand? They keep updating. I don't have a phone. I don't care about any of it. You understand what I mean? They keep updating the story of insurgency in Nigeria. Armed banditry, kidnappings is there over the years. So you have been here for eight years? I've been here for 13 years. I arrived here at 3rd March 2011. I rescued to report to Patrick Abamoro, then Minister of Interior, who became a senator. I wrote a full three pages about the Boko Haram issue. You understand what I mean? I've been here, I remain here, and to God be the glory, I'm still on my feet. I'm 70 years young. He will give me your name, he give me his name and his phone number. He is our ambassador. Forever, back out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. How young are you now? Genesis Obong, what do you feel about this scenario playing out here today? It's it's quite an experience. Getting into the camp, echoes of pain, despair, confusion, yet excitement of hope greets you as you walk in. You can see women, children dominate this camp, and all their plea is hunger, food. Basic necessities are difficult for them to get by. Basic necessities are difficult for them to reach. Any accident of food spilling on the ground, it's, it's, it's like... It's like you have just wasted a valuable resource. Women and children are here. They don't even have the next hope for the next meal. They are just calling on the government and hoping and pleading for a miracle which Professor Michael Zegome has been graciously used to provide for them today. Wow. Professor Michael Zegome decided to come and celebrate his 67th birthday with the IDP camp. What do you say about that? Knowing Professor Michael Zegome and his antecedents, it's a regular thing for him, something he has been doing time over time. And we only hope that more citizens and more, more, more of the private sector come in to do this regularly because it's obvious government does not come as much as they should. Government is overburdened by several other things. So we, we hope the private sector and other individuals come around and do the things from time to time to keep the IDP camps and keep members in the IDP camps, camps together and keep them flourishing and give them hope again. Okay, we will go back now and continue with the story and see how things are unfolding. Why Professor Michael Zekome is attending to the needs of the internally displaced persons. Okay, my name is Leato Ayuba. I'm the woman leader for this IDP camp Durimi Area 1. I'm the coordinator for the 18th FTC, uh, 18th camp in FCT. I'm the coordinator for the woman leaders. Yes. How do you feel today for Professor Michael Zekome to visit the camp? Wow, we are so happy. We are proud of our daddy, son, lawyer, Michael Zakoni, that's come to our camp today. You can see how this crowd be, because of the hungry, because of everything that's very expensive of the market. But this, our daddy, Michael Zakoni, he bring the raw rice, he bring cooked rice, he bring uh, minerals, he bring everything to us. But the way that the government take us, they are not looking after IDPs. They are not looking after less privilege. We have... We are suffering here. Even the tent that we are living, rain and inter, you will see our children, small sickness, they will say no blood because no balanced diet, because no ingredients, because we are not eating three times. And even the skill accusation that we get in our hand, not any person that gives us the empowerment from the government so that we start, start doing it, so that we come out from this IDP camp. But today is the, our bad, is a bad day of our daddy, son, lawyer, Michael Zakoni that come 
our farm, he do surprise things. You can see the millions of the children here. He feed the children, he feed the woman, and he give us a rise, the raw rice. This God will not leave him like this. God will add more, more years for him. Yes, he will reach 120 years. Please and please, I'm calling for good Nigerian government. Let them take the example from our daddy, my Kozakone, that come today and bless us with so many things in our life. We will never ever forget our daddy, my Kozakone, and we will continue prayer for him. He will reach 120. One year that reading in the Bible. I beg, I'm pleading for the government. Take an example from our daddy. He did a good thing to us. Thank you very much. The plea of women, children, and everyone here is that the private sector, individuals, and maybe the government will turn their eye of attention and help their needs, facilities, and put things in place to help them move and survive as members of society again. I have been Genesis Obong. This is same television.